um, hype. So Raimon started today with a little bit of um, insight uh, in, in Latvian culture, right? Um, well, I'll finish the day um, with some uh, more insight. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit uh, what I imagine um, Russell's. What is Russell? That's a Latvian name and that's a Russian name, but actually you might know it as Olivier Salad. So it's basically you take everything that is in your fridge, you put it together with some mayo, and it makes a delicious salad, right? And uh, so that's how I imagine combi combining different data sources in, in Easy BI uh, to get something nice out of it. We've had, uh, for me, surprisingly many excellent um, stories today about how um, you guys are doing that already. I, uh, I did imagine that, um, that we are very advanced and, uh, and uh, are doing all these combinations, but uh, I see that uh, uh, it's not so, which is actually very nice to see. But uh, let me try to give you something maybe new in the last session, which will not be easy. So a little bit about Flex BI. Um, we are uh, what you could call a white label um, partner of Easy BI. Uh, somebody asked me today if, if I'm a um, competitor of Easy BI. You know, just walking around here with my T-shirt here, you know, competitor in Easy BI days. No, we are a, a long-term partner, probably for uh, five years or so. And but. Let's put it this way, that if Easy BI is primarily for IT people in companies, right? Dealing with Jira, with, with software management, also with sales, but that's a kind of a marginal application, right? Majority is the IT staff using. So we are bringing Easy BI technology and platform to business people primarily. So sales people, uh, financial people, so CFOs, uh, sales managers, uh, CEOs are, are our main customers because we are integrating uh, Flex BI with, with ERP software. So we are specializing in uh, analyzing sales data, CRM data, um, financials, you know, budgeting, that sort of thing. And um, one of our use cases, main use cases, which I was talking about last year, if somebody was here, is, is motivation. So we are basically building these, these dashboards from all, all the data available to kind of rally teams and people around uh, shared goals and KPIs and, and show these dashboards in, 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 in rooms, in, in, in offices, and, and so on to, to motivate uh, teams to, to, to get to the goal together. Um, so this is how Olivier Salad or Brussels or Russell's uh, different pronunciations uh, are used, looks like approximately. And at this point I want to ask a question. How many of you have um, extended Jira data set? So, so the data that you get from Jira with any kind of um, additional data from whatever it is, SQL, REST API, Excel. So how many? It's not possible. Either you are asleep, uh, <laughs> because it was approximately, what, 10, 15%, but all day long everyone is talking about that. So it's, it, there's a discrepancy there. But anyway, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, so how many of you then have built a new data queue based on um, some other application than Jira. Basically the same people. Okay, <laughs> that explains a lot. So that's that's great actually. Then there's a purpose for my talk because what I want to achieve today is to encourage you that it's not hard, but it's very very beneficial to do that to um, extend both. Jira data, enrich it, and to also not be afraid to build your own uh, cubes uh, or even your own applications. So I'll explain uh, a little bit the, the difference. So 
how I understand it, right? It's, it's completely my classification of these options. So extending Jira Q is what I would say, let's say, well, we have plenty of examples of that. You have an SQL uh, database where you have something about uh, the um, issues or the employees or something like that, and you just tie it together, map it together with, with the Jira data, right? But you use the information and the measures within the issues cube as you know it. Uh, building a new cube is probably the insight uh, integration case was, uh, was the best one. So that usually is useful when you have uh, some data which might be related to Jira issues and it might also not be related at all. So where the kind of central data object is not an issue because in Jira everything is around issues but then, let's say in the insights case, it's about the assets, or it might be about employees, or it might be about customers, or something else that is in the center of the data set. So then you would um, build new cubes, and you can build these solely using the SQL and or REST API connectors, or even Excel, but that wouldn't be too much useful, probably. Uh, but with SQL uh, connection connector, we uh, let's say I'll give you an example. Um, a Spanish company called that has ten daughter companies. Um, I don't know, pretty big company, probably around twenty million turnover. And I said, look, we have business one, uh, SAP business one, uh, and we want consolidated reporting uh, for our ten companies. But to implement that in SAP business objects, which is the go-to um, business um, analytics platform, that would cost us two times more than the actual uh, SAP business one software, right? So they couldn't, um, couldn't or wouldn't want to bring that cost. So uh, carry that cost, sorry. Uh, so they asked us, if it's possible to use the, to do this with, with Easy BI, and probably within a week or two, we built consolidated financial reporting uh, that CFO was totally happy with, just using these SQL connectors. So um, this functionality is very very powerful once you kind of get around uh, around it, right? and no programming necessary, no anything, just defining some queries and then tying them. Up nicely, and then there's a third, even more uh, advanced option that uh, we are doing with with the uh, our um, main ERP software that we are working with, standard ERP. It's called that uh, you can build a totally new application uh, that uh, works the same way as you know the Jira um, add-on works, right? You just click, 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 data is imported, all the dimensions are there, all the measures are there, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to define anything and so on. So those are the three options, but the third one is obviously done uh, with uh, quite a bit of programming. It took us probably three years to, to get to a point where we are happy uh, and we are allowing to create 13 different cubes, so CRM, job costing, financials, sales, stock, you know, sales orders, quotations, and so on and so on, because there's a different data set in the, in the middle of that cube. But it's possible, and it's very beneficial. So, um, let me perhaps uh, show you um, some examples that I prepared just to show you, uh, or probably remind most of you, what are the possibilities. So first of all, I want to show you how many already built-in integrations uh, EasyBI has. So the Hansel World one, that's, that's, that's ours, right? Uh, that I just described. REST API we heard today in, in different forms, from very simple one to super advanced one. Uh, SQL we heard many times as well, Jira you know, 
Zendesk is, well, pretty much same as Jira, and probably many of you are using that uh, as well. And then the second row is actually a bit uh, probably more exotic. Uh, integration with Google Sheets is, is, is very useful uh, in those scenarios where you don't really need a proper application to manage some kind of data. So it's simple two-dimensional data. For example, um, I'll, I'll show you an example of um, defining project manager uh, for, or well, actually version manager for a fixed version in a project. Right? I mean, it's simple enough. We could use a Pro Fields uh, plugin, but then we can create also one single Google spreadsheet and just import it with Easy BI. And uh, we could use Excel spreadsheet, but if this data changes often enough, then it's kind of cumbersome to download the Excel, update it, upload it again, import it, and so on. Plus it's manual and so on. With Google Spreadsheets, you just define the same Excel, you uh, define the connection, do the same mapping, but the difference is as soon as you update the Google Spreadsheet, um, well, it regularly will import the data in EasyBI. So I'm not sure if you knew that it's possible. And then there are other applications like Basecamp, HiRise, FreshBooks, and, and Harvest that uh, a bit similarly like the Hansworld integration and the Jira integration will just load the data in already understanding uh, you know, what each field means and, and should it create a measure, a dimension, or, or, or anything, anything else. Um, so a couple of, uh, I must say, silly examples. Uh, so for example, um, I was able to, as, as, we, as, as we saw, many of you are um, doing quite advanced REST API um, <coughs> data requests and adding them in, uh, in, um, in uh, Easy BI. But, so, so I will not go in, into detail, uh, but basically I added, for example, some, some data from Crowd, uh, which is user management from Atlassian, um, to assign a dimension um, in, uh, in Issues Cube. Uh, then, as I mentioned, for example, I, I defined uh, <coughs> I defined a Google spreadsheet Will work. This is, uh, Google spreadsheet that defines a fixed version in one column and uh, project manager's um, um, email in another column. So we map it, we import it, and uh, because usernames are emails as well, then we are able to, for example, uh, define uh, personal dashboards where you log in into uh, Flex BI or Easy BI, and the project manager can see information only for the projects or fixed versions that he is responsible for. Uh, can be done with data access roles, for example, um, but sometimes this is way more easier. And obviously we could add any kind of information to any, any dimension. Um, then, Obviously, you could use um, simple um, Excel uploads. In this case, for example, I, um, uh, as an example, I made an Excel spreadsheet that defines two additional measures. Mm. Two additional measures for a fixed version. So how many issues uh, is OK to be due? for this fixed version, and how many is like a no-no, right? Like a top limit. And after importing this Excel, um, I am able quite easily to um, define a dashboard where I can use these two, um, these two measures. So here they are. So issue is due, which comes from Jira, and these two come from Excel spreadsheet. And I am able to define uh, gauges where these are used as 
uh, you know, gauge, gauge limits so that we see by the color uh, that we should take care that, you know, this, this project and that project has too, too many uh, issues due, for example. Just an example uh, how you could use it. Or we could define, you know, um, table with, for example, fixed versions uh, with the issues due, take top 10 and see instantly, you know, which one we should call uh, or write an email or something to remind that, you know, they are um, in the wrong top 10. Um, then an interesting example for you uh, might be uh, a, a very little known feature, I think, that you can upload um, Git, uh, what is it, log file, right? Um, and import it, and you can uh, generate quite interesting um, stats based on your Git commits. Um, so for example, um, some of those that, uh, that we are looking uh, at is like, for example, comparing git commits by periods, you know, have, have we increased uh, the committed uh, code amount or, or has it decreased? You know, what are the most active uh, uh, hours of day? Uh, and this is another view of the same thing, right? I mean, uh, do, we, do we see any differences between weeks of the day and activity per hour. Uh, we see that some people are working on weekends, so we could probably uh, drill through that and, and uh, tell these people off. Uh, we can see that, for example, here there was a quite dramatic change on the type of code that we produce as a company, and we can see you know, who are the most productive in terms of code uh, amount don't know about efficiency, but call them out uh, from developers and so on. So interesting uh, information for like developer line managers, perhaps, or something like that. And very easy to, to set up. And um, in terms of uh, building new queues, uh, I'll show you an example. Um, we are in the process of making a, a new little bit of software, because as I, as I said, we are in, in working a lot with motivating teams, and so we have this uh, new product coming up uh, that uh, the current name is ThanksPal, where uh, within company, uh, employees and colleagues can, can, can say, you know, they can go um, to this site and say, um, you know, hey, Yanis, we have one Yanis as well, not two now. Um, <laughs> hey, Yanis, you know, you, um, you saved my ass, and uh, I can mope for him. And this information goes um, to an SQL database, and this information then is imported using SQL connector, but creating a separate cube. Um, so it's creating a separate cube, and I can uh, then um, see, you know, that uh, this month uh, there's a very tough competition on the on the um, for the throne of the employee of the month. You know, five people are competing basically for the first place, which is good. Um, and then we can see also who voted for him, what were the main reasons, you know, are, are some people trying to game the system maybe, or is the, is the system actually being used by people, so the activity by days uh, in the month and so on, so different statistics that we can get from simple action of, of saying thank you to, to someone. We can actually analyze that very in depth using um, Easy BI. Um, and um, yeah, so that covers the second option and the third option. Um, I'll I short, shortly can show you that, uh, for example, this is our um, template, uh, our template library, similar to uh, how Easy BI has it. Um, 
And as you can see, there's different templates for different parts of the business, like CRM and sales and, uh, and financials. Uh, but the interesting bit, how we are using a, a extension of the data set um, is that we import general or nominal ledger transactions uh, from ERP. And so we have the actual financial data. But uh, uh, CFOs normally have budgets and they want to see you know, how their budget is implementing. Are they over? Are, are they under? Um, but the interesting bit is that budgeting in most of the companies I have seen is done in Excel. Uh, they love it. Uh, CFOs, accountants, they like it and they don't want to drop it. And each of them usually want to have some kind of their own format with their own formulas uh, and that sort of thing. And they usually don't want to drop it. They, they are ready maybe to change it a little bit. Um, so what we did is um, we developed, um, based on Google Spreadsheets, we developed uh, uh, Inter there in the back of the room, um, developed a Google Spreadsheet-based kind of app where CFOs can, um, uh, well, actually, the people resp responsible for budgeting. So, for example, project manager will enter their uh, necessary budget. That will all uh, go nicely together. Uh, based on different um, objects and dimensions, what they need, and CFO can then approve it or disapprove it, so there will be access rights. Yes, Google uh, spreadsheets are quite powerful that way. You can um, write quite powerful scripts, uh, access rights, and so on. So we basically were able to build a budgeting application based on Google spreadsheets, import that information in Flex BI, and then uh, build nice dashboards uh, so that um, CFOs and accountants and, and board members and so on can see how the company is, is doing. Um, so yeah, um, that's, I guess, that's, I guess, about it. Um, so, what I can say is that uh, be courageous. Um, think about all the data sources that you have in the company and uh, don't be um, afraid. Easy back can handle it, well, most of the time anyway. Uh, and go build your new cubes, extend your ex existing cubes. Um, if you need any help with that, uh, feel free to uh, contact us. And. Uh, Yes, that's about it. I encourage you. Thank you. Any questions about getting additional data into ZBI? Um, so you have a solution for Google, Google Sheets uh, for budgeting, right? Uh, is it a standardized solution? So everyone has to use the same one or you somehow allow them to flexibly use different code names and stuff and, and, and still report things as we have? Uh, well, with budgeting, it's, it's always the case that the chart of accounts is different company by company and it's, uh, um, and, and the ob objects uh, or dimensions uh, are very different as well. Uh, plus, it's actually quite, the tricky bit is that um, EasyBI needs information in two dimensions. Um, so a number and then time and, and something else, right? It, it can't have these three, three dimensions that the budgeting normally has. So what we, what we have is basically a, a set of spreadsheets that are easy enough to copy and enter the objects and the accounts that the particular customer has. And then that, once they enter in all the information, then that generates a separate kind of a pre-processed um, Google spreadsheet that EasyBI can consume. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, so uh, 
if for no other question, thank you very much. Uh,